Shalom, Shalom, it's the Brother Kadash. We want to start off by giving all praises to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rakar Kadash. That will honor to the apostles of Great Millstone. Peace, blessings, and honor, Father, brothers, and this truth. Just a day of studying. And um, I was going through uh, Tobit. So I'm on the 13th chapter. It's 14 chapters. And um, just thought, you know, maybe I should do a breakdown of Tobit 13. You know, I, I rarely see brothers do a breakdown of it but this is a great chapter and you know it's talking about the um the captivity the assyrian captivity in the city of um N nineveh that they were in but it still it still shows you some things about the captivity we're in to this day too on a major sense so i'm just gonna go through it and break it down you'll see hopefully this would be edifying for the brothers this is verse one it says then Tobit wrote a prayer. Oh man, what am I doing? Then Tobit wrote a prayer of rejoicing and said, Blessed be God that liveth forever, and blessed be his kingdom. Right? Which is the same thing we say to this day. So that's why I'm trying to show like the connections and how it likens into us today, too. You know? So even during this time, um, when when they went in when the ten tribes, you know, um the northern kingdom went into the Assyrian captivity. They were still saying, blessed be the kingdom of the Lord. They were talking about the kingdom of the Lord. You know, all the way to when John in Revelation is talking about the kingdom of the Lord, even to this day. You know, it says, for he does scourge and has mercy. He letteth down to hell and bringeth up again. Neither is there any that can avoid his hand. Meaning the Lord is the one who deems who lives and who, who doesn't. So do any man perish being innocent? No, because... If the Lord says that it's their time, it's their time, no matter how you feel about it. It says, confess him before the Gentiles. And this is very important. This is what caught my attention to um to um do a breakdown on Tobit 13. It says, confess him before the Gentiles, right? Ye children of Israel, key word, ye children of Israel. But why are we confessing him before the Gentiles? For he has scattered us. That's why I say ye children of Israel that way. He scattered us to us pertain to ye children of Israel among them, which is the same thing what Yahweh Shai said, you know, when he sent the disciples out into the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Why? Because they were sent to find the Israelites amongst the Gentiles. That's what this whole thing is about. And that's what we all say, you know. That's what we all say. You know, we all say that it's for the Israelites that are scattered amongst the Gentiles. And those Israelites that are scattered amongst the Gentiles that are living like the Gentiles that need to be woken up to repent. They are called by those names. They're called by the Greeks. They're called Greeks if they're living, you know, in Greece. They're called Gentiles if they're living and following the Gentiles. I think um I could get a precept on that real quick, which is exactly what we say, man. And this is why a lot of people have a problem with the Apocrypha, the books in the Apocrypha. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, talking about fellow brethren, Israelites, I would not have you ignorant. Ye know that ye war Gentiles, carried away into these dumb idols, even as ye were led, which is the same thing that Tobit 13 verse 3 is talking about because we were led into these dumb idols by following the other nations. But this has always been for the Israelites amongst the other nations that were scattered amongst the other nations. I mean, it's just it's just that simple, you know. Here, let me see. Not that one. This is uh, Matthew chapter 10 verse uh, 5. These twelve Yahweh Shai sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles. So pretty much saying, Don't go to the other nations and bring them in. Don't go to the other nations and teach them. It says, Um, and into any city of the Samaritans enter ye not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as ye go, preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And see, even during their time, they're still talking about this wonderful kingdom of heaven. But the point is, is to go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Therefore, they will have to go to where the actual Gentiles are at because the Israelites will be scattered, will be scattered there. And to prove that and what backs that up perfect is Tobit chapter 13, verse 
3. That's exactly what it's talking about. Confess him before the Gentiles, ye children of Israel. So it's telling you it's making a difference. It's saying, okay, this is for the children of Israel. I'm talking to the children of Israel. For he has scattered us. Because, you know, um, Tobit um, and his son Tobias were Israelites. Um, Dang. Here, let me see from what tribe. Like the tribe. Um, Here, it should tell you in chapter 1. From one of the ten tribes, probably the tribe um Nithali, Niptali, yeah, from the tribe Nithali, you know. So they saying um he scattered us among them. So that's why we're going to the Gentiles. It's for the children of Israel that are scattered among them. It's that simple. Verse four, it says, There declare his greatness and exalt him before all the living, for he is our Lord, and he is the God of our Father forever right so the scriptures amos chapter 9 i mean amos chapter 3 so the scriptures tell us who the lord is is the lord of you know who the lord known you know so you got to put all these things together you know but a lot of people want to be blind for it from them and what i notice is you know just like our apostles they won't really argue or debate and go back and forth because it's pointless it don't matter what you say, what you say, you're not going to get somebody to to um, admit that you're right, right there on um on the scene because men have egos. You can make them look dumb, but who really cares about making them look dumb? They're going to look dumb when the Lord comes back. You know, they're going to be shamed. Wisdom of Solomon chapter um, five. They're going to look dumb when the Lord comes back. Right. So the point is, is it just all goes off faith and we going to see, you know, this is um, Amos chapter three. Hear this word the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for your iniquities. And we've seen that happen. But a lot of men, you know, they, they have ties to this world. They don't want to see America be mystery Babylon. They don't want to see America destroyed. They got ties to the other nations. You know, they got to go to work with these people. They got best friends. They got women that they're dealing with, the other nations. So they have emotional ties. So they so they're clouded by those emotional ties to this world. So they don't want this place to be the wicked. They don't want these people to be the wicked. They don't want it to be for Israel only. They want other people to be able to say because they have their personal ties. Therefore, they're not giving up their life for the Lord. Though, though um, he that should save his life should lose his life. He that should lose his life should save his life. They're not willing to do that, you know, because that, so therefore they're going to always go with the doctrine wrong or right. That includes the other nations, but let's keep going. It says there, um, declare his great, his own um, greatness. So uh, we scatter amongst the other nations. We're declaring his greatness. We exalt him before all the living for he is our Lord. It didn't say for he is, everybody's lord it says he is our lord that's possessive um and he is the god our father forever it says and he will scourge us for our iniquities we just read about that in amos chapter 3 perfect precept to go with that which tells you this whole thing is only for the israelites and will have mercy again and will gather us out of all nations among them he has scattered us so this is going to be a decent little breakdown because I'm, I'm actually going to take the time to break it down. This is um, Deuteronomy chapter 28. You know that it was talking about the Israelites. You know, if you if you hearken into this word, all these blessings, if you don't, then all these curses should come upon you. Um, Here, let me see where... Here, let me find this. It's a lot of great things in this chapter, but let's just get straight to the point. Um, Deuteronomy 28, um, verse 60, uh, 64. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from one end of the earth, even into the other. And there thou shall serve other gods. That's what made us Gentiles. We went, we were led away to dumb idols like we just read in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. By the Gentiles, so we were called Gentiles, which neither thou, thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone, right? So people worship wooden cross, different stones of 
um, of, you know, of Mary and the Lord as a baby and stuff like that, statues. But the thing is, it says, and the Lord shall scatter thee among the people. So that's a prophecy and that matches up, which, which validates the apocrypha even more, you know? And then, you know, you can go to, um, Deuteronomy chapter 30, um, verse three, then that, then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity and have compassion upon thee and will return and gather thee from all the nations. So the Lord is going to gather thee, the Israelites, not all nations, but the Israelites from all nations, whether the Lord thy God has scattered thee. That's where the whole Gentile thing come into play. We got to go amongst the Gentiles because there's Israelite Gentiles that need to be woken up and need to be gathered. It's just that simple. Now, uh, verse six, it says, if ye turn to him with your whole heart and with your whole mind and deal uprightly before him, then he will turn unto you and will not hide his face from you. Therefore, see what he will do with you and confess him with your whole mouth and praise the Lord of your might and exalt the everlasting king in the land of my captivity do I praise him and declare his might and majesty to a sinful nation. O ye sinners, turn and do justice before him. Who can tell if he will accept you and have mercy on you? And if we did that as a nation, the Lord will come back as soon as we do that as a nation and save us. That's that's what we need to do. That's the key. That's the goal. Verse six is exactly what we need to do as a nation. We didn't try everything else. The NFAC want to pick up guns and march. We didn't try everything else. But this, this is what we need to do. This is that simple. But it's, you know, it's all prophecy at the same time, you know, which do the monetary 30 pretty much says the same exact thing, you know, but prophecy Deuteronomy 30 is a prophecy so it will happen at some point verse 7 i will exalt my god and my soul shall praise the king of heaven and shall rejoice in his greatness let let all men speak and let um and let all praise him uh, for his righteousness O jerusalem the holy city he will scourge die for thy children works and will have mercy again on the sons of righteousness jacob's trouble jeremiah 30 Starting at verse seven, Daniel chapter 12 is going to happen. You know, it says, um, give praise to the Lord for he is good and praise the everlasting king that his tabernacle may be built in thee again with joy and let, and let him make joyful there in these, indeed those that are in captivity and love thee forever. Those that are miserable. So, um, and praise the everlasting king, his tabernacle may be be built in the again so what that um reminds me of which i think one of the elders just did a breakdown of um of this chapter man come on how do i just skip past the whole book of amos um amos chapter 11 um chapter 9 verse 11 it says in that day where i raise up the tabernacle of david that is fallen and close up the breaches thereof and I will raise up his ruins and I will build it as um as in the days of old. So this just proves even more that the apocrypha is biblical. Basically I'm going for every precept, every verse in 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 the in the Bible has a verse that matches up with it, a precept perfect. So you can't possibly say at least for Tobit chapter 13 that it's not biblical, you know. But it's just showing you that I'm bringing these precepts just to show you that I'm giving you the correct breakdown. Um, verse 12, that they may possess the remnant of Edom. No, some Edomites are going to be saved with us. No, we're going to possess the Edomites. And all, in in of all, the heathen which are called by my name, say the Lord that does this. So even all the rest of the heathen, we're going to possess them. They're called by the name of the Lord, Zechariah chapter 14, because all nations is going to have to follow the Lord, follow the law, statutes, and commandments. All nations, everybody on earth is going to have to. You're not going to have a kingdom where people are going to be serving other different gods and stuff like that. They're going to be punished. They're going to have to follow the Lord. 
So just because it say that they follow the Lord and call by his name or something, what does that have to do with salvation? What does that have to do with inheritance of the kingdom? That's only for the Israelites. But the other nations are going to have to uh, follow the Lord, too. And they're going to rejoice. Why? Because when the righteous are in rulership, they're going to rejoice and they have judgment coming from them. Like we just read in Amos 9 verses 11 and 12. They have a judgment. They have a punishment. After their judgment, after their punishment, they're going to rejoice. Along as they follow the law, statutes, and commandments. It says, um, verse 11, many nations should come from far to the name of the Lord God with gifts in their hands, even gifts to the king of king of heaven. All generations to praise thee with great joy. So just like I just explained with um Zach here, let me matter of fact, let's just go to it. Because little brother, brothers be like, look, see, anybody could be saved. No, that's not what that means. Many nations should come for, uh, for to the name of the Lord God with gifts in their hands, even gifts to the king of heaven. All generations should praise thee. So it's showing you there's a difference because they, they going to praise us with great joy and praise our Lord. Uh, Zechariah 14, verse 13, and it should come to pass in that day. That a great torment from the Lord shall be among them, and they shall lay hold every one um on the hand of his neighbor, and his hand shall raise up against the hand of his neighbor. And Judah also shall fight at Jerusalem, and the wealth of all the heathen round about shall be gathered together. Same thing. The um from um many nations, verse eleven, many nations shall come from far to the name of the Lord God with gifts in their hands. All they wealth, right? Um back in uh, Zechariah 14 verse 14 um, And the wealth of all the heathen round about Shall be gathered together Gold and silver and appear in great abundance And so shall be the plague of the horse and the mill Let me um, get straight to the point Verse 16 and it, shall, and it shall come to pass That everyone that is left of all the nations Which came up against Jerusalem Shall even go up from year to year to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the feast of tabernacles. They're going to have to keep our law, statutes, and commandments. And it shall be that whosoever will not come up of all the families of the earth into Jerusalem to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. Meaning they're going to have plagues on them. This isn't going to happen to the Israelites in the Bible. I mean, the Israelites in the kingdom. But the other nations are still going to get punished for going off in the kingdom. And they have judgments that's coming against them. Um, here, this is Isaiah. Because we're going to break it down, man. Just to show you it's the truth, right? Isaiah chapter 60. Um, Isaiah chapter 60, verse 11. Therefore, thy gate should be open continually. Meaning, why? Just like verse 11 says in Tobit 13. So they could bring their gifts. And praise us. Um, they shall not be shut day nor night that man may bring into thee the forces of the Gentiles and that their kings may be brought. Just like it says, even gifts to the king of heaven. They're going to bring all these gifts, right? Um, for the nation and kingdom that would not serve thee, not be on our level, not inherit the kingdom with us, not have salvation with us. But the nation and kingdom that would not serve thee shall perish. Yeah, those nations shall utterly be wasted i mean it gets no i mean that tells you the whole story what's going on here jump down to verse 14 the sons also of them that afflicted thee should come bending into thee and all in all they that despise thee shall bow themselves down at the soles of thy feet and they should call thee the city of the lord the, um, the zion of the holy one of israel i mean it's just no way around that that's how you know we got the truth, because that's exactly what we teach. The Israelites, the elect of the Israelites will be saved, inherit the kingdom, and the other nations are going to have to bring anything of wealth, anything that they have, they gold, they silver, anything of wealth, anything of glory, they're going to be bringing it to us, meaning they're going to be in subjection to the Israelites. They're going to be under the Israelites for slaves and servants. Now, Revelations 21 also tells you the same thing, just, to, just for overkill, right? Uh, verse 24 and the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it in the kingdom of the earth and the kings of the earth do bring their glory and their honor into it and the gates of it shall not be shut at all so the gates again 
by day and there shall be no night there and they shall bring the glory and the honor of the nations into it. So we're going to bring the glory and the honor of the nations are going to our gates are going to be open just like in Isaiah 60. That's what it means. Don't try to make it mean something else. What it means is they're going to our gates are going to be open to take anything of glory and honor or wealth that they have, just like Zechariah 14 tells you. And so they could give it to us. Why? Because they're going to be tribute to us, meaning they're going to be under us. It's just that simple. Now, back in Tobit chapter 13. Oh, this is getting kind of long, but, you know, we got to go through the whole thing and break it down. So people can't say different things and say it mean this and say it mean that. We get in the precepts to show you exactly what it means. Curse are they which hate thee and blessed shall all be which love thee forever. I'm going to go ahead and get it, man. Because this is because at the same time, this is supposed to be edifying on a breakdown of Tobit chapter 13. But a lot of people say, well, we don't we don't read from the Apocrypha. That's not biblical. So what's happening right now is the Lord putting the spirit on me to also show you how the um, Apocrypha is biblical because it matches up with all the precepts I'm bringing. Genesis chapter 27, uh, verse 29. Let people serve thee, which, which is what we said once again. That's the promise that was given to the Israelites. It was given to Israel. That people are going to serve us, not be on the same level, not be saved with us, but serve us. And the nations bow down to thee. Which is what Amos 9 and 11. It all goes together in Tobit 13. It all goes together perfectly. The nations are going to bow down to us, not be even, not be saved with us. Be Lord over thy brethren. And let thy mother's son bow down to thee. Curse be everyone that curseth thee, and blessed be everyone that blesseth thee. And what does um verse 12 say? Curse all them which hate thee, and bless all uh, all all be which love thee. It says the exact same thing. So they had to be studied. They was reading from the Bible too, from um, the book of Genesis too. That's what, that's how you know this is biblical. Uh, rejoice and be glad for the children of, um, of the just, for they shall be gathered together and shall bless the Lord of the just. Um, we could go to Romans chapter nine to prove that, but I mean, come on now. Oh, blessed are they which love thee, for they shall rejoice in thy peace. Blessed are they which um, have been sorrowful for all they are scorched. For they shall rejoice for thee when um, they have seen all thy glory and shall be glad forever. And we already went to when the righteous are in rulership, the earth, um, the earth rejoices. When the wicked is in rulership, the earth mourn. So second Edger six, Esau is the end of the world. Jacob is the word that follows. Meaning when we get in the kingdom, the earth is going to rejoice. They have punishment. They're going to be in sub subjective to us and different things and our laws. Right. But alone, but after their judgment is over, as long as they keep in those laws and those statutes and commandments, like Zechariah 14 just said, they're going to rejoice. But when they go off, the Israelites, the elect is going to be there to punish them. Let my soul bless God, the great king for Jerusalem should be built up with Sharpies, emeralds, precious stones, thy walls and thy towers, and battlements with pure gold. The streets of Jerusalem shall be paved with beryl, um, carcoral, and stone of offering. And all her streets shall say hallelujah. Um, and they shall praise him. Blessed be God, which has uh, um, exalted it forever. And, I mean, it says the exact same thing in Revelation 21. I mean, um, verse, let's just start from verse one. I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth was passed away. The wicked is no longer in rulership. Now the righteous are in rulership. Second address six and nine Esau. Matter of fact, let's not hold no punches. So let's get it. And there was no more C. So second address, which brothers know this already. Second address chapter six. Verse 9, for Esau's the inner world, Jacob is the beginning of it that follows, meaning it's a new rulership. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, talking about the Israelites, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bribe adorned for her husband. To prove that even more, you could jump to verse 12. It says it had a wall. It's talking about the kingdom. It had a wall great and high and 12 gates. And at the 12 
and at the gates 12 angels and the name written there on which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel that's who it's for the children of Israel israel and then if you keep reading through it goes through verse 18 and the building of the wall was of the jasper and the city was pure gold and light clear glass so it tells you all these different elements that the kingdom is going to be built of which is exactly what toby 13 is breaking down so hopefully this has been edifying with that i'm gonna say salvation to the elect shalom toby 13 breakdown